those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. Um, that is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys, if you guys can understand that, you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true. Um, something greater will. When you connect the dots between talking to people and achieving all the goals that you have, you become unstoppable. That is the whole, that, that is everything. Everything comes down to having a quality conversation with property owners, right? With, with the distressed property owners and then with your cash buyers. Jerry Norton put it perfectly, and I thought that this was just genius of him, and I love this, and I, I think that we should really uh, make this a normal part of, uh, of the real estate uh, conversation, but freshman year is wholesaling. Sophomore year is flipping. Junior year is buying rental properties and senior year is development and multifamily and all the other exciting things like lending money and all that stuff. You have to build the foundation first. I cannot tell you how many people have gone out there and they buy rental properties right away and they make a huge mistake and they end up selling those properties at a discount. You know it, I know it, because we find most of our deals are from tired landlords, all right? So we need to know, we, we, we need to build this thing on a solid foundation, and that is building the skills of effective communication with uh, distressed property owners or the people that represent distressed property owners. So we're going to jump into my computer before um, I, I introduce the rest of the crew here. We're going to jump into the computer for a little bit of instruction so that you can go out and take some action right away. So check this out. I want you to go to redfin.com. All right. I want you to put in the city that you do business, right? Simply search that city. Then I want you to go over to this all filter section here. All right, the all filter section, I want you to go and I want you to select houses, right? Because this is the biggest pool of buyers that we have is for single family houses. I want you to go to the time on Redfin. I want you to click this more than 30 days. All right, we want some hair on these deals. We want some rust on these listings. We want them to start getting nervous. We want them to start having, uh, you know, people put their properties under contract and those fall out of contract because they locked them up too high. Ryan's gonna talk about that and uh, some of the deals that, that uh, we're putting together right now. And then I want you to click this beautiful button right here that says Fixer Upper right? Redfin does all the heavy lifting for you. They go in and they scrape the descriptions and they show you, okay, this says as is, this says investor, this says um, cash only, right? And I want you to pull that list. As you can see right here, uh, one more time here, Matt, there's 71 properties that we can go after. The last thing I want you to do is I want you to sort it from price lowest to highest, okay? Now, if you're in a market that is, um, it has lower prices, I don't want you to go in after those properties that are like five or 10,000 or 15. I want you to set the base at about 30,000 for these deals, okay? Because there's an agent involved and there's a lot more, um, that there's a lot more cost to the owner for these deals. And I don't want you to go and lock up a deal at $5,000 that needs $50,000 and it's worth, you know, 60,000 once it's fixed up, okay? I want you to go after these properties that are typically fixed up for more than 150,000, all right? So now we have these properties, and what I want you to do is you simply go in and go through this list, and then you're gonna find in on these addresses, and guys, I would pull this list, I would show this, but YouTube doesn't like it. YouTube doesn't like us putting everybody's addresses and phone numbers and everything on the spot, but that's not gonna stop me from making some calls right now. I've got a list of four properties that I want to call live here and see if any of these agents will have a conversation with me so you can hear and feel what it sounds like to pre-qualify these agents and see what is really going on with these properties. Okay, so let me pull out my cell phone here. I've got my list. I've got, let me, let me get in here. Now, one thing that I will tell you is once you go into the actual description of the listing, don't reach out to the Redfin agent. Re there, underneath the property um, description has who it's listed by. 
You want to call the listing agent and have these conversations, okay? So I've already pulled them. I've already got their phone numbers. Let's see if we can get a get a hold of them and uh, and see if they're re ready to be realistic and what's going on with these properties. All right. First one we're gonna call is Carla. All right. We're gonna see if Carla's gonna answer and uh, have a conversation right here live with us all. And then maybe Ryan, you can call the next one. Sure. Yep. Hi, is this Carla? Hi, Carla. This is Brent Daniels. I was calling about your listing on Grant. Yes. Yeah, I was just calling to see if that was still available. Okay, great. Do you have any any current offers that you're negotiating on it? No, but we do have a ton of standing offers. A ton of what? We do have standing offers. What What does a standing offer mean? The the that the uh, buyers are still interested and their offers are still standing. Got it. They just haven't been accepted. Exactly. Why Why haven't you guys accepted any of their offers? Sellers want a number. Yep. They want um, which is really close to asking price. Okay. The highest we have right now, the highest standing offer is 240 Okay. So if you can beat that, the house is yours. Okay. So if I can get above 240 we can lock this up? Yep. Now, if and, and obviously this is a cash purchase um, as is. That's what your seller's looking for? Yes. Okay, got it. And if they can't get that... If for some reason they can't get the the 240 or that buyer backs out or whatever else, what are, what are they going to do with this property? Because I, I think I'm going to have to be lower than that. But are they are, are they going to reduce it to the point where it sells? Are they going to keep it? What are they going to do? Yeah, they're they're going to keep it until they get that number. They're not in a rush. Okay, got it. So they're just trying to see is this this is their property? It's not like a rental or something. We don't have to deal with tenants. Yeah, this is their property and. Um, if they sell for what they want, they'll sell it, get a new one later, but they're not in a rush. Let me ask you this. Would they be open? I mean, I could, I, I could get them a higher price, but it, it would have to be in payments. Would they be open to payments? Um, yeah, they wouldn't. I, I've, I've already had those offers too, and I presented it and they just, they don't want that. Got it. So you've just had a ton of offers on this thing. Oh, a ton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah unfortunately, it's, I just can't get the sellers to budge on anything so yeah i i understand i understand is let, let, let me ask you this carla do you have any other properties that are similar to this where the sellers just you know they they just need to get rid of it they want that cash offer i don't just that one okay awesome well i really appreciate it i'll take a look at the numbers and uh i'll get back with you sounds good thank you all right carla appreciate it that is most of the conversations right. that I have. Is that with the conversations that you're yeah. having, Raph? Yeah. yeah. By the way, guys, oh, yeah. Ryan Thornton, uh, my acquisition manager, he has done over two million in deals, like actual income. He's here to answer all of your questions. So I want you guys to load it up. Ryan comes on about once every month or so, every couple months, and it's some of our top rated shows. So make sure that you've got your questions lined up for Ryan so that you can uh, you, you can get them answered and start taking action right away. Raf, are you going through this with these these type of listings? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the same conversation over and over again, right? Like people want retail, they want to get you know as close to it as possible and whatnot. You see it though, they're more willing to negotiate with price points now, so it's, it's slowly tapering. Slowly, it's gonna yeah. take a while for it to get to the point where we need it to be but you know when, you, when, you say, when you say that when you say it's going to take a while do you, does that mean it has to be on the market for a while do you think that it's just we have to get past 2022 into 2023 we have to get interest rates have to go higher inflation has to go higher like what are you thinking is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back with a lot of these sellers being realistic about selling their properties so so here's here's the thing a lot of uh, a lot of the, the stuff out there is sold on stipulation right and fear uh people when they have a property in the market that's what we're looking at properties that are over 90 days on you know it's they start getting anxious they start getting more more apprehensive about the the potential loss that they're going to inquire as opposed to like right now I may get 240 but you know what if i don't move within the next couple of weeks i'm gonna get 200 yeah uh and and that fear tends to be a lot bigger so anyways they're, they're getting that uh uh that, we're seeing that shift. We're having conversations like that more often, yeah. where they're more willing to work, and, and and they wouldn't budge at all at the beginning. Now they're they're 
you know, they're more willing to to just, you know, play with the numbers a little bit. Yeah, we have a lot of buyers who are still like they look at what they could have sold their house for in January. The yeah. sellers? Yeah. Yeah. And well, sellers. And they're, in and March, they're still, they were gonna list yeah, and they're still for. trying to hang on to that. So it's a yeah. mindset. And what Raf said, it's slowly <clears throat> starting to starting to realize, yeah. all right. It's never going to be that again. Yeah. And if I really want to sell this, I'm going to have to be realistic. So it is. It's it's slowly starting to get more realistic with these sellers. Well, you call Luis so, here. Yeah. There's his number. Guys, real quick, I got a question. Yep. So I just noticed that you can download this list of properties off Redfin. Mm -hmm. Would there be any reason why to do that and call the, the sellers direct? Or do, do, do you want to go through the agents? Yeah, I mean, you want to go through the agents because they have an agreement with them, yeah. right? They, they already it. have a signed agreement. Now, when it goes off the market, yes, you can reach out to them, and that's a great conversation because right off the bat, 5%, 6% comes off their price typically Yep, got if it. they're reasonable. But what we have to figure out is from the 71 properties, and by the way, this updates every single day. Every single day, somebody goes past 30 days, right? So this, this list, you can call every single day somebody new from this list and see out of these 71, who's realistic? Yeah. Who's going to be the one that actually needs to get these properties sold? And that's why I like asking that question. If they don't sell this property, what are they going to do with it, right? Are they, is it owner-occupied is it owner or is it tenant-occupied? Right. I mean, it's all of these things matter. And what I have found is so far, and let me know what you what your experience has been, because you've been calling a lot of these um, vacant houses versus occupied houses. Yeah. What's the? Well, it's there's there's more motivation. Right. Yeah. When somebody when it's vacant and uh, depending on what's happening with the rent and what's going on with, you know, their financing and timing and all those things, they're going to be more motivated to, to sell. But yep. if if they're living the property, I. <laughs> Unless there's some real distress as far as back payments or something else that's going on, yeah. they're they're just they're just Call not rushed. Call Let's see if yeah. we can get right. a deal right here live, right here on the progress, not perfection. Halloween show, scary show. Halloween month, the Halloween scariest month. show. Ooh, the scary <laughs> show. It's scary. Hello. Hey, Luis. This is Ryan. I am calling about your property on Adams. Hi, how you doing? Great, how are you? Good, good. How can I help you? Hey, I just wanted to get an idea if uh, your sellers are you know, still in negotiation with uh, getting some, some deals, offers on the property. Yeah, he's been rejecting uh, quite a few. Uh, they're all coming very low, uh, not to his liking, and uh, he's just been rejecting them left and right. Sure, what's, uh, what's low to him right now? They're all between 190 uh, 250. He accepted an offer at one point for 275, but you know it was an investor. I, I know their game. They go in there, they do their uh, their inspection, and they, they tear down the house and they come back with a counter offer uh, that comes back to 230, 220. Sure, know? sure, sure. Are they living in the property right now, or do they have tenants? No, no tenants. That's vacant right now. Okay. So what will they? He is fixing it up. He is fixing it up uh, as he goes, little by little. He's not in a rush. It's a, it is an inheritance home. Um, the roof uh, it seems like it's in good condition. Uh, I'm not a roofer, but you know, it's not leaking. Yeah. Uh, AC is working. Water heater is working. He does have appliances in there: washer, dryer, refrigerator, um, stove. I'm not sure if he has a microwave in there. Okay. He does, but. So uh, it, he's fixing it up as he goes. He's just not in a rush. Um, sure. So, you know. and so what is, I mean, for a cash as is offer at this point, what is it that he is ultimately looking for? Like, hey, you know what? If I get this number right now, realistically, you know, we can make a deal out of it. 285. 285. Okay. Well, and it, you know what? He accepted the 275. Uh-huh. And then they backed he out? The 275 and then they backed out. Well, you know, I mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I know the game. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an investor myself. And yeah, yeah, sure. We all, we, all, we all have to play that game to, to, to get a good deal. Yeah, it has to work on both ends. So, I mean, if, if both parties kind of have that understanding and it works out, that's awesome. So, I mean, if he doesn't get the 275 he's looking for, you're, you're thinking that he'll just continue to fix it, fix it up and, and uh, what, list it, you know, uh, down the road at a higher price? Or, I mean, what, what do you think is going on in his mind? Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we would have to look at, re, uh, you know, once he gets it done, I mean, we would have to relook at, you know, what the house, is, the house market is, where it's at. Sure, sure. And, uh, and you know, just uh, redo the, con, the, the comparables and, and, and yeah, I got that. put it up or whatever it is, you know. 
Yeah, I get it. Hey, so Luis, I mean, we're, I mean, you probably know this. We're, we're going to be much lower sure. than, than 285, even 275. Now I can probably get to that number, something that he, that he likes if I can do it in payments. Do you think he's open to something like that? Um, you know what? We've had that already. We've had offers like that as well. And uh, so he rejected those as well. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, hey, Luis, do you have any other properties that, you know, somebody might be looking to sell that needs fixing up that, you know, they're like. Uh, I do. Um, they're not sure. Uh, I don't, I'm not even sure if this is going to happen because uh, I just have happened to receive a phone call to see if I'm willing to list it. Uh, but I have not had a. A follow up on that. So, okay. Uh, if you want to check back on me in, um, I don't know, in a couple of days or maybe at the beginning of next week, uh, and I'll, I'll probably give you some more information on that. Yeah, I can absolutely do that. Okay. Hey, Luis, I appreciate yeah. your time, man. I'm going to follow up with you in a couple of days, okay? Sure. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. All right, dude. Later. Bye bye. You know what's incredible? How often when you call directly to a property owner, do they give you that much information? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Right? Like not right off the bat. You got to no. really, you gotta build really in. dig in. You, you got to really build. And I think that's why we get bigger deals when we go direct to the property owner is because you're, you're putting in that time and you're kind of peeling back the onion and really discovering what is the motivation, what price do they want, all of these things, what's their timeline. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about on market is we know their timeline is right now. They want to sell it. But what, what, what we're looking at here is the reason that these are on the market for so long is because they're too high the price is too high too much they're needs not, to be done inside not. but i will tell you this that when when he said we've had offers with creative and taking payments they might take not he might not be interested in that right now but in 90 days and it's vacant Somebody breaks into that property, steals the appliances. Mm -hmm. Somebody goes in and starts squatting. Somebody goes in and starts tagging, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the, the living room and like making a mess of it. It's a vacant property in South Phoenix. I mean, it's not like it's that urgency goes way goes up. Way up. Yeah. So, I mean that it's a follow-up game, even when you're talking with the agents. And I love that you, I love that we're asking the questions. Do you have any other properties that, yeah. that, that need some renovation? We, we're, we're looking to buy something right now. And realtors, every realtor I've talked to is so frustrated right now because they have all these sellers who say, Hey, I, we can list it, but I want it at this price. Yep. And then after that 30, 45 day mark, they're not allowing them to slash the price right. to a to a degree that hey we're going to sell it and so that really that really what shows the the motivation in uh, in homeowners right now. So what you want to ask is like Ryan was talking about are they still negotiating offers? Is it still available? Is it is it still uh, have you accepted anything? Because sometimes you you run across properties that are listed but they they have accepted offers they just haven't switched it up in the MLS or they're about to accept it like in the next hour or so. Yeah. Two, you want to know why haven't they accepted any offers that they've had because they've had a lot. What's going on? Three, if they don't sell it for the price that they're looking for, what are their plans with the property? And four, are they open up to uh, some sort of creative solution for this? I love the question, if they don't sell it mm -hmm. at the price, what are they going to do with it? Because right. I've heard realtors say... <laughs> They need to sell. Right. So at some point, they're going to have to be realistic with, with all of this. And so when I hear that, I'm like, okay, so this really is a follow-up thing. That's where you put hot lead. Yeah, yeah. Hot yep. lead. And then you build the relationships with those agents. And then all of a sudden, you close that deal. Or maybe that deal cancels. They bring you another deal. Yes. Because you over-communicate. 95% of negotiating with real estate agents is over-communication. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's just staying in front of them and, and, and making them part of your squad. Yep. It's incredible. So, guys, we're going to open this up. I hope you enjoyed those first two calls. I can't believe they answered. I, I mean, yeah. Mike, you've seen me call in my office and I call like 15 <clears throat> uh, agents and none of them answer. I'm leaving voicemails for all of them. And this was miraculous that on the live show, they actually answered the call. So that's that's phenomenal. Follow up with the text, too, because yep. just like homeowners, some realtors, they don't want to talk on the phone because right. they got to answer those questions right then and there. They want right. to they want to correspond through text messaging, which is fine. That's but right. uh, don't just call, call, send a text. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Let me throw uh, two things in there. Two questions that I like uh, also when I'm reaching out to agents or, or anybody for that matter. But like, for example, this property, I see that it's been listed for like, you know, for a little for, you know, quite a bit of time. Right. Is there something that I'm missing? Is there something that I'm not seeing with the pictures or, or you know, what's yeah. going on with it? It's an open ended question. It just kind of, uh, you know, opens up the, the whole uh, thing for any 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 potential things that we're not considering on the questions. That's one. Yeah. And then uh, the last one is, is 
if somebody ch uh, something changes and you do come across another property, even if they don't have one right now for the agents, mm -hmm. uh, save my number. To give me a call back whenever you know we're in. Doesn't it look like, like they're on a split up. screen? They do, <laughs> but they're standing right next to each other. Touch each other. Yeah, look, yeah, look. Yeah, look. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. That's great. So, guys, listen. This the, the the point of the show is three things. Number one, we celebrate. Right, we celebrate whatever successes that you're having out there. Whether mm -hmm. you've closed a deal, whether you've made your first cold call, whether you <clears throat> you went out and you found your first driving for dollars lead whatever it is whatever progress that you've made in your business we want to celebrate because it's about progress not perfection number two right we want to give you the answers to any questions that you're dealing with any challenges and that's what i really want you to put in your head you don't have problems you have challenges because problems is negative we got to really watch the words that we say because it really matters in the way that we approach it so really watch the words that you're saying these are challenges that we can overcome these aren't problems that we need to solve okay so th that's number two and number three number three is squat up oh yeah squat up Squat up in the comments section. Consider this your networking. You want to squat up in the comments. Make sure that you put uh, where you are doing business, where you live, and start making the connections in the side chat uh, so that you can find like-minded people, guys. I am telling you, there is a world of 330 million Americans out there, and there is a teeny, 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 teeny amount of people that want to go out there and really serve the community of distressed property owners. Why would you want to do this by yourself? No, yeah, I, I don't like, know. Like when you can you can be in the midst of people who are you know motivated to 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 be successful, right? And you feed off of each other. Yep. Like why do it by yourself when you can work with other Squat people? Squat up. Yeah, there is awesome. there is more. By the way, the stats right: 143 million uh, residential properties and six to ten percent, and that's going to start creeping up. Those six per ten is going to start going mm -hmm. seven, eight to ten percent of the real estate market at all times is in distress. So that's upwards to 14 million opportunities that we have every single year, all the time in this country. There are way more opportunities than there are us. It's about collaboration, not competition. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're squatting up in the comments section. We had a comment uh, before about, um, what, what was that one, Daniel? By the way, Daniel is here. Alejandra, unfortunately, has the flu. We miss you, Alejandra. Hope you're watching. Um, so Daniel is running the comments section. So if you want to get in here, uh, make sure that you say something nice to Daniel, who is our uh, incredible videographer. Uh, Michelle asks, why do they say it is too low? Great question. So the offers that they're getting are too low because the expectations of the sellers are, 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 are planted six months ago. Mm-hmm. Right? They have seen story after story after story. They've seen their neighbors sell for ridiculous prices. And when you inherit a property, I just looked up the property that you just talked to. The guy bought the property, whoever he, he inherited from, whether it's a father or a grandfather or a grandmother or a mother or whatever it is, they bought it for $17,000. <laughs> They like bought it for seventeen thousand dollars. Like in nineteen seventy-two. In, in, yeah, a long time ago. I'm sorry, fourteen thousand dollars in nineteen seventy-nine. That was close. <laughs> right. Fourteen thousand, and he wants to get two seventy-five as a minimum out of it. And this property needs a complete renovation. Yeah, that's them just trying to hang on to the the loss that they're just not ready to you know, come to grips with. It's not even a loss. It's all pure gain. They just inherited the property. They just <clears throat> it's the expectations. What that could they have been? Have. What right. could have been? That's yeah. it. And I'm just curious as to what the actual assessment is. I mean, we don't, here's, here's one thing also is make sure that you actually talk to the person, whether it be the property owner or the agent before you do research. Yeah. Because you will, you will, you will slow down. You will pour literally like slime all over your business. If you start doing research and due diligence before you have a conversation with the, with the property you owner. You start overanalyzing and then trying to find all the answers right then and there when all you have to do is just pick up the phone and get the answers right then. Yeah, the only yeah. thing that I would say if you're in, when you're in, um, and I'll zoom down here, Matt, so that we're not showing any addresses and, and show what this is about. Here, you can look at this right here. Um, this property. So he's got it listed for 300. This is the one that, that Ryan just talked to. But look at this. This right here is what it's sold for. What you want to look for is you want to look for some seasoning on that. Mm -hmm. That's okay, Matt. We're good. Um, you want to look for some seasoning on that deal. If they just bought it in 2021 or 2022 and they're asking for 50, 60, 100,000 more than they bought it for in 2021, 2022, move on. You've got one option creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. All right, let's crack this thing open, Daniel. Do we have any celebrations to, cra- to, to start us out here? Olivia. Okay, on market listings, what percentage are you knocking off the price? 70% or 83%? I love that. Yeah, we don't run it based on the comparables. I like going in at like 50%, Yeah, Olivia. If it's sitting on the market, oftentimes they, they want a ridiculous, especially if it's over 30 days. Now, if you find a deal that you recognize and it's just smoking and it just hit the market and you want to start negotiating with them, uh, that's where you're going to find the most competition is right off the bat. But then once it starts seasoning a little bit on the market, um, that's when you see that a lot of people that locked it up too high are canceling. So uh, I like going, sometimes I like going 30%. Yeah, depending on what's going on inside. Of the list price. Yeah. Because it's just like anchoring. You know, you want to drop that bomb and then just kind of see what they'll say after that. Mm Mm-hmm. De Niro. De Niro. Stingy about De Niro. Uh, (laughs) Hey, Brent, I was going to do a double close on a property that's closing on Monday, but I then decided to do an assignment. Title is telling me I need to do a release of contract. Yeah. Can you tell me how to do that? Yeah. De Niro, honestly, the the title company will tell you and give you the paperwork to be able to do that. So just ask them. Just say, okay, I don't know what that is. Can you send me what you need so that I can? So what happened is De Niro, um, typically what we do is we put together a purchase agreement, right? We put together the purchase agreement. And then with an assignment agreement, we then give, uh, I, I locked it up with the seller and I got the contract and, and here are the terms. And then I assign it to Ryan. Ryan now has the ability to buy that and he's going to pay me 15,000 for my contract. And now it's his. You know how excited right? he is. Huh? He's yeah. excited about it. Yeah. He's, he's I am. Excited. No, it's yeah. a great deal. That, that's, now that's what that's De Niro exciting, right? did is he had one purchase contract between him and the seller and one purchase contract between him and the buyer, right? You need to cancel this contract and just assign it to your buyer. That's the difference. And the title company will, will show you exactly how to do that. That was fun. We had props. We, I, yeah. I, I've been working a lot of yeah, props. I feel like you should bring a uh, props. I wanted to do, I wanted to, br- I wanted to have glass bowls, this Mike. Is a, this is a fun show. We got four yeah. cool dudes. We, we got, got four we cool got, dudes. We got ghosts. Yeah. 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 We have you know? split screens. Split, split screens. <laughs> Check this out. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. It's just a ghost. Hey, oh, yeah, hey, wow, that's crazy. There you go. Anyway, uh, Abraham. Hey, Brent, question. Is there a time that it's too late to call an agent? I get home around 6 or 7 every day. They're all I'm in bed. An, we, yeah, yeah. I have an 8 to 8 rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with agents, you can call earlier. Um, but I want people that are alive, that have some energy, that are going to like actually have a conversation and not be mm-hmm. too grumpy. So I think that most of the time, and listen, guys, especially when you're calling agents right now, it's very, very, very stressful for them. Yeah. They're not getting a lot of sleep. They're truly not. Right. So eight to eight is a good rule. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's when you want to make the, the majority of your calls, unless they ask you to call them before or after that. But um, very rarely do they do that. Oh, two-parter. All right, Daniel. Thank you. Daniel, you're Daniel. doing great so far. Yeah, you're amazing, dude. Jeez Louise. Rushing I'm you it. what. But, guys, we need some celebrations. I haven't rung this victory bell. We're 25 minutes, 31 yeah. minutes into the show. I haven't rung the victory bell. Raf has his guitar. Mike has his, uh, his tambourine. tambourine. And we, we, I, we, can you get him that kazoo? There we go. Uh, the kazoo. Uh, yes. Can you give a breakdown of the percentages in low markets and high markets? Percentage times ARV repairs your fee. Yes, seventy yeah. percent. Now, listen. If you and and that's for most markets. If you're in a market that's just wildly the the supply and demand is just wild. Some of the Los Angeles, San Diego's, the Seattle's, uh, some parts of Portland, uh, Miami for certain. Uh, don't even mess with like New York City. It's not worth it. Um, then you, you, can, you can increase that to 80% minus uh, repairs, minus your fee, um, and, and, and get real close to what the, uh, where you want to be for your max allowable offer. Um, yes. Matt, do we have the updated Zillow uh, percentage? Yeah, let's find that. So we'll pull, pull this up for you, Jay, and uh, you could just take a screenshot of it as Jay, we're talking about it. Jay Quellen. Jay Quellen. Yeah. <laughs> what is that from? Uh, Key and Peel. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Quellen. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll pull up that percentage on there. But what I like doing, if you're going to do a quick comp, is go to Redfin, 
go to Zillow and go to realtor.com. Each of them are going to have a little bit different um, algorithms for what it's worth. And then uh, take all three of them, add them all together, and divide by three to get the average. average. Okay? So if it's two, 200, 220, and 215, you've got 635 <clears throat> there total. Divide by three, and you're going to get the average. And then run that based on these calculations here. Nope. Behold. Nope. That's, that's way dated, Matt. Oh, nice try. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> uh, it's 50, 35, and 10%. So 50%, 35, and 10%, depending on where the price range is. Um, and Matt will pull it up. He just uh, He's digging into the database. So when you're looking at it, if it's above 250, you want to be at 50%. If it's between 250 and 100,000, you want to be at 35%. And if it's below 100,000, you want to be at 10% of the Zestimate. And that's going to take into account the profit that the investor is going to want, um, the, 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 the decrease in the market that they're going to expect that they're going to build into their equation, and the fix-up costs. Hey, Brent. Also, it's not a deal, but I finally created my LLC. We'll celebrate Perfect. that. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What is it, Gazoo? What kind you of got a hum into it. Uh, trombone, I'm, not, I'm not putting my mouth on this. What? I'm not. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know where this thing has been. Mike went into a special room and brought it out. I'm like, I expected I more of you, man. Yeah, really? Geez. Yeah. Really? Let's trade. Afraid. Let's trade. You can have the kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, hey Brent and Ryan, building my buyers list every day. Can you guys quickly explain how to find them on LinkedIn, IG, and through tax records? Thank you. Um, Look at that nice smiley face. Right yeah. Now. So, um, well, I, I won't pull it up because I don't know if it's going to pull up too much information that, um, that YouTube doesn't like. But literally in LinkedIn, just type in real estate, real estate investor, investor yeah. and then in your area, uh, real estate developer in your area. And that's going to pull up some really, really, really great resources there. And a lot of the times the real, the ones that are really doing stuff are the ones that put their phone number in there. Yeah. And that's that's really easy. That's actually how I met Jamil. Mm. Is I called a Josiah off of LinkedIn, really? sold him four deals that he ended up selling through Jamil. And yeah. then uh, you know, yeah. Jamil came out that he was, oh, I'm the I'm the Wizard of Oz. I'm the, I'm guy. the guy behind I'm the, the guy. curtain, right? Yeah. Um, so And for IG, I mean you can put in just entrepreneur and it's gonna pop up a whole every every real estate person's page I've seen on Instagram, it says entrepreneur. Yep. And so that could be a But a, make sure you put real estate in there because estate. people put entrepreneur for anything. Their right? their leggings business. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I sell leggings. Please. I'm an entrepreneur. It's probably a good business. Probably is. People, it, it probably a lot of people is, have it is, legs. A, it is a good business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Would you would you wear legs. leggings? <laughs> I mean, maybe if I was cold under like a snowboarding outfit. Anyway, <laughs> Pooja, Brent, you said follow up won't lose your deals. Mostly people after saying they want to sell block me after me following up consistently. What are your thoughts? They don't want to sell. They're not motivated. Pooja, they yeah. don't want to sell. That's all it is. Yeah. And you can also set up that next call too. It's like, hey, you know, uh, I'm super interested in purchasing. You know, if you're in interested in selling, I'd like to follow up with you. How does, you know, next week or two get weeks? Get permission. Or yeah, get permission. Get, get, get permission, Pooja. I mean, maybe, and I'd be curious, if you want to send me a, a recording of a call that you have on your lead follow-up, I'd love to break that down yeah. uh, at brent at wholesalinginc.com, brent at wholesalinginc.com. Um, I would love that. Um, but it, it if you first you can get permission if you're feeling like a lot too many people are blocking you um and and just don't be too aggressive with your tone you want to be if they feel like they're you're there to serve them they're not going to block your call or they or or they're just really not serious yeah. and they're getting a lot of calls from other people and they're just it's like a habit for them to block the number block the number block the number so yeah. uh just show up at their house no i'm just <laughs> i mean you could but only if you feel safe. But I really do say that. It's like, hey, I'm sure you get so many different calls. I don't want to be the one that's like annoying you. So what, what would be a, a, a good follow-up time that, uh, that, that, that works for you? You know, things like that. And if they're like, you know what? No, I don't want you calling me back. You know, then it's done. But uh, other than that, then you can go forward. But uh, a lot of times if you're having that conversation prior, you're not going to get blocked. You just have to, you determine whether or not they're really motivated to sell. 
By the way, just as a side note, what Ryan and I did in the first, if, if you didn't, uh, if you just jumped on the first 20 minutes or so, Ryan and I were live talking with real estate agents. Every single day in the Rhino Tribe, in our coaching program, we call two hours a day, every single day, Monday through Thursday, live leads, live agents, everything. And, and, and you really get immersed in that. So if you're interested in something like that, uh, go to wholesalinginc.com. And the other thing that I will tell you is, um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're getting, if this, if this, um, information, content, instruction, whatever you want to call it, is getting you closer to your goals, then hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. That's all we're asking. I'm subscribed. Yeah. Are you guys subscribed? I'm though? subscribed. Yeah. yeah. Can you turn on the air a little bit, Matt? I am. <clears throat> I am. Sweating like a horn church. Yeah. I know <laughs> with <laughs> Alan, Alan, there it is. Look at these handsome look at, guys. Yeah, look at that. I know with homeowners, you have the four pillars, but what pillars should we hit more when talking with the agents? It's almost always price and terms. It's all, you know, the timeline, you know, the condition, unless they only some of the best deals that I've done on market or people are, are listing agents that put one uh, picture on the, on their listing. Yeah. No interior photos. It's a great indicator. So if you need to get that, sometimes you need to get that. You need to understand what is the condition of that property. Uh, but for the most part, you've got the timeline. You've got the motivation. You, you have the price that they would sell at. It's just you getting and understanding what is their real motivation here. Yeah. That's really what you're digging in. What's the motivation? What's the price? And if they are stuck with their price, then you get to terms. So if, if they don't sell this property for the price that they're looking for, what are they going to do with it? Yeah, I, I do hit on motivation quite a bit, mm -hmm. a little bit when I'm talking to realtors because it just gives me an idea of how much follow up I really need to be doing yep. uh, on this property. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hey, Ooh, are you yes. kidding me? Shalom. I finally got my first deal under contract after 97 days of cold calling, currently looking for a cash buy right now. <laughs> Don't remove this. I got something to say to Shalom. Here we go. Work. You gotta work. hum into you it. Gotta hum. Mm, yeah. That's a, that's a kazoo. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Oh. All right, Shalom. 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 Listen, here's that's the deal. Good. Ninety-seven days. Shalom, you've done it. I'm telling you, ninety days is the hardest part. The first ninety days of, of of keeping a strong and building a strong, positive, optimistic mindset is the toughest part of this business. Mm -hmm. The first ninety days is what makes or breaks anybody in this business. Anybody that is going to be a full time real estate entrepreneur, the ninety days is the fist fight. The ninety days is that mental. Um, ch challenge that you have to surround yourself with incredible people, and you gotta you gotta take the action. You gotta you, you gotta be in action every single day. I don't care if you're just talking to one person or making one call and then building it up to two or three or four guys. This is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. It is not rocket science. Connect the dots between talking to people and all the goals that you have. That's it. It, it's all right there. It's all done through here. You can you can talk to anybody in this industry that has made it on a high, high, high level, and they all started out in the in the dirt, making the calls, going crazy, getting out of their comfort zone because that's what you need to do to change. And 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 just like the 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 TikTok that I had with Kobe Bryant on there, it's the process. Yeah. It's the it's it's the challenge that you look back and that you're fond of. Nothing that you've accomplished that came easy is something that you're going to remember. It's always the things that are challenging. It's always the things that you've had to overcome. If it's too easy, everybody would do it and then it wouldn't be special, right? So we're talking about 5%, 5% of the people that are entrepreneurs that are really making it over 3 years, make it past 3 years of being a, a business owner. It's a special thing. It should be something that you take a lot of pride in, but you don't get there without getting through that first 90 days. Shalom, congratulations. Absolutely awesome. incredible. Yep. Sell that thing. I want 50K out of it, Shalom. 50K. <laughs> That's what I want. I want him to come on next week and be like, I just made 50K. And it's like a picture of him just throwing cash in the air or whatever. You know what I mean? That'd be wild. Do it, Shalom. Probably do won't, but that's it. okay. Do it. Probably won't take the picture, but I hope yeah. he makes 50K. KG, I have a property under contract in Atlanta trying to dispo it, hoping Keegley can pull it off. Here we yes. go, Yes. Mm -hmm. 
He's a natural with the uh, the guest kazoo. <laughs> Your timing wow. is a little off. I, I have to like motivate myself to. That's good. To uh, do it. Congratulations, get it sold. Hey, listen, don't just rely on Keegley. I mean, they are phenomenal. They are doing it. If you have an agreement with them, fantastic. If you if if you sign a JV, then let them handle it. Uh, but if you have the ability to bring them and bring your own buyers to the table, do it. You should be on the phone. You should be uh, working as hard to sell your deals as you do to find your deals. Mm-hmm. For sure. Use, uh, use that property to build your buyer's list, too. Whenever you get a property, mm-hmm. even if uh, you're in the process of, of marketing on, you know, from on the site or whatever or working, you know, whatnot, use the property address that you have so people out there see that you're actually generating deals and start building your buyer's list with that kind of – it's Mike, an asset. Mike, yeah. do we have something that uh – Shows them how to get the top buyers in the market. Cash buyer list. Cash buyer list. Mm. The cash buyer pack. Sorry, cash buyer pack. It's in yeah. ttpinsider.com, ttpinsider.com. Check that out. Um, guys, it has unbelievable tools and resources in ttpinsider.com. If you haven't signed up for that, make sure that you do. All right? Awesome. Uh, how do you make an offer for a property if it was an investor and they ran out of money? Mm-hmm. You got this one. Contractors keep walking out. They may have price for what they bought and rehab they have done so far. And you will find that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Investors who bought in you know March. April, May, June uh, of this year mm-hmm. and just everything plummeted and they're just bleeding money. Mm-hmm. They have hard money loans out there. They're just trying to they're just trying to get rid of the property. And a lot of times the the price points are just too too much. Yep. Even creatively, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't work out. Uh, so uh, it, unless they're just ready to take a huge huge hit, which some are. I'm talking to two right now that are mm-hmm. like I desperate. Know you are. Yep. Um, yeah, there's not much we can do with the price point and what they're what they bought it for and what their hard money loan is. Listen, they got to take a loss. Yeah, yeah. They got to take the L. If they if they keep holding on to this with 12% interest rate, 10% interest rate, oh, yeah. and the market going down in a lot of the areas, they are going to lose everything. The they're going to lose the whole deeper thing, just right? Deeper yeah. and deeper. Yep. So they'll give that property back to the hard money lender and, and, and then that's a whole mess in itself. So I've been asking, you know, these investors who are running into this problem. It's like, what, where is your line in the sand? Mm-hmm. Right. Where, you know what, you know, what's happening at what point is that line there where you go, it needs to be gone today. Mm-hmm. You know, and you want to know, you want to know what that time is yep. because at some point, even right now we're four five, six months into this kind of decline Mm -hmm. and they're still trying like every homeowner they're still trying to get as much as they can but everybody's got to have a line in the sand where the loss is just too much and it's it's done we i I gotta sell it it's pretty remarkable um teresa because what what is common is they market like 50 60 80 thousand dollars more than more than they bought it for for, yeah and you're like bro you this is like a hundred grand less than what you bought it for Mm -hmm. right now in this condition right like it, what, what is going to happen? How do you keep this up? You know what I mean? And a lot of them, I mean, some of them I just assume don't have the money to come in to, to, to pay it off to close it. Yep, right. So I don't know if, if there's ways that you can go in and you can have conversations with the hard money lender, which is a lot easier than just going in with a conventional bank and yeah. saying, hey, listen, they can't afford this thing. They're going to give it back to you. <clears throat> is there some way that we can help you out to mm-hmm. minimize the loss? I think that that's a smart conversation to have. They're like 5,000. That's much yeah. easier than going through a bank because those are actual right. people. People, they right. here. They're ready to talk shop. <clears throat> oh, man. I had a question. Do you, get, do you guys feel like these flippers that are, that are in trouble right now, were these mostly amateurs, new flippers, or, or you know, everybody? The one, the, the few that I've talked to, they're new. They just started buying in this increase in the I last I bring that up months. because you guys started with what Jerry Norton talked about, where, guys, there's a, it, there's a progression to this. You know, you start out freshman year – as wholesalers, you got to spend your time there, cut your teeth, right, mm-hmm. develop those skills, and then you move on to sophomore year flipping. But a lot of people, they, they try to skip steps yep. and just start out as flippers, and, you know, that's where you get into trouble. Well, Mike, I honestly think that Wholesaling Inc., the, the podcast, yeah. cracked it open starting in 2015 and made um, wholesaling normal. Mm-hmm. Before it, it was really kind of a mystery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before it, there was just certain people that were that that would dispo all of the properties, yep. and people weren't building actual businesses around it. Right. You know what I mean? And then Wholesaling Inc.'s podcast came out, and then it exploded. 
and uh, it became normal. And so I think people are just kind of now catching on to the fact that the first step is to be able to source discounted properties. That's all wholesaling is. Yep. Wholesaling is the art of, of sourcing discounted properties. It doesn't matter what your technique is. Mm -hmm. It's just finding it and getting it over to somebody else. You're not taking the risk on. That's why people are like, they watch all these like fix and flip shows on TV, which by mm -hmm. the way, guys, it's all fake. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's all, it, it's not, I mean, it's all state. It's, it's also, all scripted. It, yep. Wholesaling is where you develop those skills. The skill of finding the discounted properties is where you develop the network. Right. The network of the cash buyers. The skill of evaluating properties. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Yep. I've been doing this for how long now? Almost two, two years. years. I came in with zero real estate experience. Mm -hmm. And just from talking to people on a daily basis yep. about the process and going through the motions, like, I just feel like my skill set has just like increased so yep. much in real estate in general. Yep. So uh, yeah, but doing you've had a lot of reps. Yes, and that's I the mean thing. you're on the phone all day. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like the the reps amount to something. Now if I just started and just like hey I'm gonna buy a rental, like I would have been so mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. without. The so the idea is push back getting into flipping or buying rentals as far oh, yeah. as you can until yeah. you really have a solid foundation. Well, in wholesaling. if you do that and you get into a flip and you have a war chest of income that you've made or mm -hmm. at least exit strategies that you have to be able to pay for those losses, yep, if sure. they come up, yep. you don't run into the issue of foreclosing on a property, right? right? Yeah. Foreclosing, yeah. giving it back to the hard money lender, which mm -hmm. which we see is going to happen a lot. Most yeah. uh, very uh, like super active investors in the Valley, at least, right? They started pulling back and... and and or, or getting more cautious about what they bought in late March, oh, yeah. April, and stuff like that. Sure. It's the right barely was on the wall. coming. They yeah, got it. it was literally June fifteenth. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. June fifteenth, the, the hammer came down. And it was like, what just happened? All the yeah, closings. So they, 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 they're, it's barely coming room. back. Yeah. People are getting, I mean, just more comfortable with with in uh, those savvy investors, right? Like the ones that have been in it for a while, the ones that do have the war chest. Yep. Stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting to see it. Kim, hey uh, guys, uh, Kim here in Chicago. <clears> What's up? All right. If I can work the business at any time, what is the best time to cold call? I like getting it done in the morning. Uh, I like, you know, nine to noon. I, I, I think the philosophy of uh, the morning is for finding business. The afternoon is for doing business is really powerful because the fact is life's responsibilities start creeping in on you after lunch. <laughs> It just does. I mean, it just, it, it, I mean, it depends on what your schedule is, but typically, you know, people from nine to noon are, are pretty busy in our society, right? People are, are doing their things. You know what I mean? And so, um, except for these property owners, right? These property owners are, are available to take these calls. So I think nine to noon is the best, um, window for you, Kim. And it, it, it honestly does. It depends on what your schedule is like. Cause for me, mornings aren't great because I can't be consistent. And I, and I want uh -huh. to be able to be consistent on my calls on a regular basis because it, it just starts a flow of when I start to when I finish. And uh, so I'm a little like afternoon to a little earlier afternoon or late morning to, to early afternoon is when I have that. Why can't up. you be consistent in the morning? Because I have kids and yeah. it's like getting them ready for school. And then I have a baby. I got to take them to preschool. I got to drop them off at grandparents. It's just it's just it kind of throws everything off. And by the time that's all done, it's like it's nine, nine fifty. What time do you wake up? Five thirty. Where, where, what do you do after you get up? I work out. For how long? Probably an hour and a half, two hours. I'll every day? Every day. Well, Monday through Friday. Playing hoops? And then I'll play basketball for cardio at the end of it. Getting swole? Getting swole. No. I love no. it. Sore. Getting sore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting sore. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> Jay Poe. Wow, that's a beautiful picture, Jay Poe. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. Is that like the Andes Mountains? That's uh, Honda was just there. I think that's yeah. Peru. Is that uh, Peru? Okay. Uh, looks Machu like Machu Picchu. Picchu. North Dakota, maybe? <laughs> North Dakota. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> three like months of dealing with the three <laughs> P's. By the way, guys, the three P's, right, is paralysis by analysis, perfectionism, and uh, procrastination, mm -hmm. right? you you got to really watch these three P's, and once you can recognize them, you can destroy them, right? And so I uh, finally went out and door knocked pre-foreclosures. First property I wanted to this. talk to me. I love Next this. door was easier and easier. No deal yet, I love but I got out of my house. Come on. Oh. You know what? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. That's the hardest thing for people to do when they start out in this is just taking that uncomfortable step, right? Going and knocking on a stranger's door and asking if they want to sell their house. Right. Like talk about being uncomfortable, yep. you know? so. I, 
I love that. That's awesome. And just keep it going. Keep yes. the momentum. But yes. find a squad wherever you're located. Find people that are around you that'll go with you. That'll do these things. That that you know when you go to a meetup, the the I I think that the or a RIA or whatever it is, a real estate investor association meetup, whatever it is, you want to go there with the intention of finding people that are going to be proactive and they're going to do the business with you. Hey, listen, I would like to invite everybody over to my house on Saturday. I'd like to invite everybody over to the library. I I, I got a room in there that that we can make calls and we're just going to go round robin and we're just going to call. Uh, all the properties on Redfin that are in rough shape. We're going to call all the driving for dollars leads that we have, and we're just going to have a really good time with it, and we're going to find some opportunities. Watch what happens. Watch what happens when you're around really proactive people. All of a sudden, all those fears, insecurities, labels that you have, oh, I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert because people have told me that because I've told myself that a million times. But I have this dream of being, you know, being a real estate entrepreneur and doing all these other things. They, they don't mix. I don't understand how you could be an introvert and want to be an entrepreneur and want to go out and do amazing things. I don't believe it. You can't I'm be not afraid. Gonna believe it. You can't be afraid <laughs> because, and want to be successful. Because you yeah. would, it's a different brain. It's just a different thought. You would just be a, a cog in the wheel of somebody else's business forever and ever and ever. Right. Or or do some sort of data or do something. Be an inventor. Or you do code or something like that. That's fine. But people that come into real estate and understand that sourcing discounted property has a huge amount of skills built into communicating effectively mm -hmm. with people. <laughs> So people that are putting labels on you, people that are that, that are telling you what what you are and you putting labels on yourself, I think destroy all that. I think just get around all those people that are doing a round robin, have a super Saturday, have a super Thursday afternoon, have a whatever. Find three people. Find one person. Yeah. Just connect. Just be brave. Just go. And then everybody's doing it and then everybody feels great about it. I think that that's powerful. And I don't believe that as an entrepreneur in the real estate business, this whole I'm going to just be an, 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 an introvert and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to hire other people to do these things. It just doesn't work. Not in this market. You got to go out and put the work. You got to put in the work. You got to learn to talk to people. Oh, I just got chills a little I'm just bit. Telling that was you. like intense. Alejandro, yeah. do I need to have my LLC before my first wholesale deal? Raph, what do you think? Uh, I think, yes, I think it's a very smart thing to do to uh, put anything that you're going to get in writing under an LLC as opposed to your personal uh, name because then they, you know, something happens, they can go after your personal assets. Uh, it's just, it's a blanket of liability or against liability. So, uh, yeah, I'd recommend doing so. You don't have to. I mean, you can get a deal and put it under contract under your name, uh, hashtag not a CPA or attorney and whatnot, but, right. but it's, uh, it's a smart thing to do, to, to set it up as a business right from the get-go. Awesome. Mike, what do you think? Uh, I think they can. And then I think, you know, we use Prime Corporate Services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they can go to Prime Corporate Services forward slash TTP, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll give you a free one-hour consultation. There's no, you know, pressure or obligation for anything, but they'll kind of help you identify what the best structure is for your business, wherever you're at, and help you set it up if you want them to. Awesome. Rich. If you get a contract, property under contract with seller financing, does that really make the numbers work by just getting payments? How does the deal work with payments since the end numbers is still the same? Rich, I love this question. Okay, remember this. Um, when, when it comes to negotiating, it's price, terms, and you. Okay? It's price, terms, and you. So if they want a higher price, then you have to get favorable terms. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, I would, for pretty much any single family house, I would pay a million dollars. Any. I don't care if it's in like real terrible, you know, rough area. If I could pay a dollar a month for that payment. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> dollar a month until the <clears throat> deal's paid off. In the year. Right? 3,000. Well, I, I mean, six. listen, you can literally, you could literally put things in writing yeah. Yeah. that are a dollar a month for the next million years. <laughs> That, that could be that you, you could put that together if that's the agreement that you had with the property owner at 7.1%. Now, is that realistic? And, and, and is that is, is that bombastic? Yes, it's crazy, right? I'm just being wild here, but I'm just putting, uh, you know, some could you go and go, listen, I can pay you $100 a month for this property. I can give you so this guy wants 275. Mm -hmm. I can. What if you gave him $300 a month and he with nothing down? Mm hmm. Three hundred dollars a month, thirty years with a five-year balloon, and and once balloon. this property's fixed up, it's it's worth five hundred thousand. So then you don't have to get a hard money loan to purchase it. 
you can have your budget secured for the fix up of this property. Once it's fixed up and you have that investment in there, could you, you, you could cash flow it for the next few years, or you could just sell it and, and pay off the 275,000 that he wanted, 280, whatever it was, and, and you make a profit. So it's not about when we ask the question, well, I can do it in payments. Um, that's just to see if they're open to it, Rich, right? That's just to see if it's, if it's an option. I can get you that price, but it'll have to be in payments. It's an option. It's to see, okay, well, yeah, they'll carry the note. They'll be at the bank on this. And then you start negotiating. And negotiating just comes down to uh, how much do you put down, how much a month, and for how long will they allow you to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me throw a couple of things out there. There's three things that we look for and, and when it comes to creative financing. We we structure deals this way so they're sexy to the end buyer if you want to assign it. Right. Yep. Like because you can also assign a, a creative financing. The buy-in. <clears throat> so one of them is going to be we try to negotiate about 10% equity if possible. If not, we'll go 5% equity, but it's still doable. So it's, it's you can buy it at 95%. Uh, so that's the, the first thing. Uh, we try to secure a, at least a $300 cash flow on the uh, on the deal so compare from uh, rents go to rentometer.com figure out what the average rents are and then um, figure out your your interest rate to end up 300 to 400 dollars on the monthly payment below that number that way you have some cash flow in that deal um, and then the term right we we uh, we do any i mean at the bare minimum we want, we want to have a three-year term on this uh, why? Because it gives the end buyer or the investor opportunity to do something with the property, come and flip it, rehab it, rent it out, cash flow, do whatever they need to do mm -hmm. for a period of three years, mm -hmm. refi, and get out of that loan and then pay off the seller. That way they're not you know, married for the next 30 years. Um, and, uh, and, and like now you have a, a package deal at 95%, so almost close to retail, but you have incentives in there yep. uh, you know, uh, for, for, for that buyer. So there's value to that deal, to that structure. Three years, you think? Mm -hmm. Um, we do a minimum of three minimum. years. We try to push it. What's yeah. your what what's what's your sweet spot? Uh, five. I mean, five years. They can do they can do a lot with five years mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in there, and um, and yeah. I mean, if it's something that I'm taking down, I try to extend that just because I know I'll perform on it. But uh, when we assign it and sell it, I mean, we don't we, we don't want to have the seller inherit a headache if the uh, end buyer turns to be a. Uh, you know, I don't know, bad and buy. Is, yeah. rent, is rentalmeter.com your favorite place to comp rentals uh, and find out rental prices? Mm, it's it's super fast. It's easy, uh, and it's very you know it's very decent as far as uh, the uh, the price point. So I mean, anywhere in the country, we've looked properties there, I looked up properties there, and and you know it dials it and gives you a range. So rentalmeter.com is pretty. You good. You can do a whole show on creative nice. financing in yeah. itself. Yeah. There's just so well, much. Well, you could do a whole, yeah. <laughs> a whole, a, a whole yeah. <laughs> channel. Uh, and, and, and there's one. Uh, it's called Pace Morbies. Yeah. Uh, Marcos, <laughs> by the way, we're going to answer this, and then you know what time it is, boys. Mm. It's time for Which Would You Rather? <clears throat> All right. Marcos, hey, Brent, what are your thoughts on wholesaling in Southern California, San Diego? It's getting better. Yeah. Todd Toback. It's getting, it, it's getting better. Yeah. yeah. You know, Todd Toback, who's a coach with uh, Wholesaling Inc., coaches Novations, Novation. has been in that market for forever. <laughs> Uh, it's it, you will do a lot less deals than you will in um, Alabama or in <coughs> Memphis, North Dakota. right? Well, there's no deals in North Dakota because uh, there's no people in North Dakota. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, they're bigger deals, but they're just not as frequent, and that's what really really stops people because you have to talk to significantly more. Like if the average is one to two hundred people that you need to talk to to get a deal, it's more like one to a thousand people that you need to talk to in Southern California. Okay, and, and, and that just is a is real challenging to a lot of people. So uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, I mean, there's deals everywhere. I mean, you see, I mean, in San Diego, you see construction everywhere. How did they get the deals? How did they find, and you know, how did, how did these investors find these opportunities? All right. Now, here we go. Would you rather? Guys, we're going to go, we, we do this segment on the show every week. Which property would you rather own? Number one. Oh, Ooh, lake very side. nice. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. This is a beautiful three-car garage, Lakeside Estate, uh, located somewhere. I, I believe it's in, where? Oh, Ryan, you're in the, you're, you're in the. Oh, <laughs> Ryan, oh, come on. Nowhere to go. That's Jesus, not the right way. <laughs> All right, there you go. We got out. this house. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like this is in the Midwest somewhere. All right. North Dakota. Is it North Dakota. Is it ghost or Dakota? this one. Now, this mm -hmm. one is on its own island. That's a beach. It's on its own island. 
If you saw another picture of this, it is by itself. You have to take a boat to it. Mm. Nobody, you are the master of your own island. Mm. So would you rather own this property? By the way, the inside of that property is phenomenal. Both of them are phenomenal. Do you take the uh, lakeside estate here? Or do you take the island by yourself? <laughs> What's the price point? The same price point. They're the exact same price, pretty close. I'm doing the lake. So, I'm doing uh, the lake side. Well, don't tell everybody yet. Oh. Put in your votes, number one or number Aiken? two, oh. and we're curious. Were we able to get the uh, the thing up, Daniel? The the it poll. Yeah, there's a poll. Oh. Just select on that poll which one uh, you would uh, rather have, and uh, and we'll 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 show the results at uh, right before the end of the show. All right, Raphael is out of here. Yes. Love you, buddy. I'll see you tonight for the yeah. Suns game. Game on. Suns. First home game. I'm a season ticket holder, so that's exciting. And uh, Raph is going with me tonight. Nice. My wife is uh, oh, yeah. unable, so yeah. here we go. Love you all. all See right. you, bud. Uh, Liana, what's your best advice to get funds for a creative financing deal? I mean, for a down payment or any out-of-pocket expense. I love this. Mm -hmm. Number one, you, you know what I think people have forgot, Mike? Ryan? Yep. People forgot the first rule of real estate. Location, location, location. I have seen and talked to more people that have locked up creative financing deals in some of the worst neighborhoods and worst markets, and it turns into an absolute anchor around yeah. their ankles, dragging them down into financial ruin. Oh, yeah. I'm not joking. So, one... You need to make sure that if you're going to raise funds to go and add a door to your portfolio, it's in a location that is really outstanding. Do not sleep on this. Listen to me. We have, there's going to be three, on average, this is the stats, three to five times in our life where the economy shrinks, where everything goes down, where you get the opportunity to really buy Fine. discounted properties and really get some unbelievable rentals for your portfolio. And I highly suggest, this is just me, this might be controversial, but I highly suggest you use all the cash flow to pay off that property as soon as possible so that you can own it free and clear and actually have wealth that you give to your family or to whoever when the time comes. Okay? If you need to live off of cash flow, you will lose in this business. You need to live off of the income that you currently make from whatever income source that you have. Hopefully, it's from real estate. Hopefully, it's from, from uh, wholesaling real estate and getting big chunks of money and building a big, he heavy, healthy bank account. But if you need cash flow, if you need $300, $800 a month of cash flow for survival. To sustain your life. Yeah. You, will, you will fail. I am telling you, it's going to be a nightmare for you. And I, I get emotional about this because I see it all the time. Everybody's like, I just want to, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I want to go out there. I want to lock up deals. I want to get them under contract. I want to get these creative finance deals. And then it turns into a disaster. Mm. So number one, Liana, if you're going to raise funds, make sure it's in a good area. And if it's in a good area, guess what? The funds raise themselves. Yeah. Because people love it. People love that security. They love that it's a, in a good area. They're like, wow, that is an amazing deal. We have three to five chances in our lifetimes to be able to find these in good areas with good location. Good schools. Yeah. Great school districts. Mm -hmm. It is key. I am telling you guys, it is absolutely key. Just owning property because you think you're going to get depreciation on your taxes is ridiculous. You have to get eight times the amount of real estate value to write it every year to cover your your income on average oh. eight times so you make two hundred thousand dollars a year you got to buy 1.6 million dollars of real estate every single year that puts if, it in perspective if you make a million dollars a year it's eight million dollars every single year and then what happens is you go oh well i'll get good leverage i'll leverage this and this then your 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 um your balance of how much your leverage versus how much equity you have is so off that you're one market cycle away from losing everything and you're going to see this coming up that's where we're going to get these big deals oh yeah you guys have been doing this since 2004 i am telling you so buy in really good areas and raise the funds for really good properties. Leon, if you want to go and lock up a deal creative, sell it to somebody else that's a few steps ahead or, or they're, they're full time in this thing and they're, yeah. they're, they're putting their, their um, 
portfolio the, together. That's the that's that's their whole business. And you can sell you can wholesale those things for ten, twenty thousand yeah. dollars. They're the best deals out there to, to dispo right now. So you don't have to raise money for these deals unless it's phenomenal. And if it's phenomenal, then talk to everybody that you have networked with, every family, every friend, everybody, and raise those funds. Yeah. But the property should raise the funds for itself. Mike, thoughts? Yes, sir. Quit buying that creative stuff in bad areas. <laughs> See, yeah, there's the end of story. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Christopher. Brent, real quick, so when I make offers on market, the agents are uneasy about the option I choose to assign and be released from liability. Do you recommend to assign and not be released? Um, I don't know what that means, Chris. I mean, once you assign it, you're no longer in the yeah. deal. Yeah. So I don't know what liability that you're referring to. The liability of closing the deal? I mean, you should be replacing the earnest money. That's the security that the seller has in the in the purchase agreement typically is the earnest money. So you should be replacing it. I kind of read that the realist, the realtor the doesn't like wants, that they assign. The agent wants to be released to the liability. Yeah. Oh, the agent wants to be released to the liability? Know, yes, saying, got it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm not so sure. if an Maybe, agent yeah. brings you a deal and you <clears throat> assign it to somebody else, you can put in your assignment agreement that the agent no longer represents the new right. assignee. Okay. Right? But talk to an attorney about it. Talk to a title company and just get all that verbiage figured out, and they'll put it right into your assignment agreement. Hmm. Is it in ours, Mike? I don't know. I don't think it is. Not that. That's kind no, of a... That's not... That's, we don't have a lot of agents bringing us uh, um, off-market deals not, like yeah. that. I right. Mean, Alex. Uh, hey, guys. What, what would you recommend on seller financing if the seller just wants too much interest? Raising the sale price or rather more down payment to help them decrease the interest? You know what? When you're paying a seller's price, mm -hmm. when you're paying a seller's price, it's a give and take type of thing. Like, listen, I can, I can get to your price, yeah. but I need favorable terms. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, if, if you're going to have that partnership and give them their price, they got to come down to something that works number right, numbers wise on your end. Yep. And so that's just part of the negotiation. It's like, listen, Hey, I, I can do a cash as is offer here. That doesn't work for you. I want to make this work. So I'm going to pay your price, but it needs to be this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And that's the discussion you're really having with them as far as wanting to make a deal. If they want to make a deal, if they want their price, then, uh, they're going to work with you on the terms. And listen, if they are talking interest and they're talking this and then that, they know they're savvy. Yeah. They're, sa they're yeah. not gonna. They don't need to sell it. Mm -mm. They typically don't need to sell it. They're looking for a home run and somebody to just come in and and give them you know higher than average interest rates. You could just get a loan for that. Why wouldn't I just go and get a mortgage for it? Right. Right. And most people you talk to, they don't know anything about creative financing. And so those are the people you kind of have to use kid gloves with. Right. Because it's a scary thing. And uh, and the, the tact is important. So like, listen, hey, I really want to get your price. I understand that you need it for these reasons. And I can totally do that in order for me to do this for you. I need to have it at this. Yep. I need to have it at this. And I need this. Juan, no. yes, great question. What mm -hmm. if you get a creative mar creative on market deal? Is it common practice for the end buyer to pay the commission? There's a couple different ways. Typically, it's going to come out of the down payment that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I had a conversation yesterday. We actually filmed it. It's going to be on our YouTube channel next week. It was phenomenal. And it was a fire damage property. Uh, fixed up goes for five fifty five seventy five. Right by the flip that we did on thirty sixth. Okay. Right by it, like right next neighborhood past the freeway. Okay. Okay. They have it on for two hundred eighty six thousand. They want two eighty net, and he wanted twenty thousand down, and ten thousand to go to the agent. So he wanted a total of thirty thousand down, and then he was gonna he, he'll take twelve hundred and fifty dollars a month for five years. Right. Okay. Right. So it's a it's a decent deal. It's tight, yeah. Because it, fire damage, you have to go and get permits and figure out. You got to get yeah. the whole roof re-engineered and the whole thing. Good area. Um, but if he would come down thirty, forty thousand, it could be a really good deal. Yeah. So in that instance, that's a great example. Twenty thousand down to the owner, ten thousand. The only problem yeah. I have, you know what the problem I have is, Ryan? He just bought it in May for two hundred thousand, mm. and he wants two eighty. Yeah. And he says, "I'll just fix it up." Right. If I don't get it, it's no. been on the market 117 no, days. He's right? not fixing it. It's been on the market 117 days. That's a that's a guy mm. that you can negotiate with and 
and get a price. He bought it cash, so I mean, yeah. I understand, and it's like true cash. It wasn't like oh, it wasn't hard. Money. It wasn't hard money. Mm. Um, so it could just be one of those people that bought, and they're like, "Oh man, yeah. I made a mistake. If I can, you know, get rid of it, I will." So, and I'll say, well, you know, what's, what's, I'll call them in 30 days, 80, 80 grand or, or 50 grand. <laughs> yeah. How about 20 grand or 20 grand? Yeah. I like that better. <laughs> Rich, what is your cost of acquisition? Do you do realtor deals because it shrinks your, no, Rich. No, it's just because that more properties are popping on the market and mm -hmm. buyers aren't there to snatch them up in two seconds is the reason we're going after on market. Yeah. L literally in Right before May, uh, right before June fifteenth, any property that hit the hit the market here that was that that needed renovation had fifteen solid offers. Now there's zero. zero, right? So we're trying to get these properties down at significant discounts for the people that really need to get rid of them, um, even if they start out with the expectations of what it used to be. Yeah. Um, so, but cost of acquisition, typically we're right around 2000 when it comes to our cold callers or texters and then referrals are free, free. So there you go with, with pay-per-click, it was much higher with pay-per-click. It was like 58, uh, hundred cause we had a, um, a really good team doing it. Uh, but that creeped up really fast. So we actually cut that out. <laughs> it, it was up to like $20,000 <laughs> to remember, get a deal. I remember when I first started, I was like, Oh, what's this? <laughs> I collected. Yeah, you were you were charging. I, us. I was charging. The, <laughs> I didn't know how it worked. I, I didn't <laughs> like every every I time know. you click a pay per click thing, it's like four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Ryan was doing it eight times a day. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> he cost us more money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John, if I am now starting out with little to no money, any suggestions on how I can get a proof of funds letter? What other options can I present to the seller if I can't? Thanks. Um, very easy. You can Google it. You can go to Kogo Capital and pay seven dollars and get theirs um you can reach out you can literally google hard money lenders in your area literally google it hard money lenders charlotte hard money lenders uh santa fe hard money lenders san antonio whatever and and find um you know three hard money lenders give them a call and ask them for um uh, a letter of credit and and typically they'll send it over to you. And they, I've talked to I've talked to some of your students who yeah. have squatted up and partnered with somebody who had already been a little bit more established That's and it. had that yeah. already. Yeah. And find somebody. I mean, find somebody in your market that has has the ability to close. Mm -hmm. You need that. I mean, uh, if you go in as the buyer and you don't have the ability to close, you're just lying. Right. So you have two options. You can go in as a wholesaler, which most people don't understand what that means. Uh, so it's a little bit confusing. Or you can go squat up with somebody that has the funds. Listen, you could go to any meetup, any Facebook group, any whatever, something like this, and, and reach out to um, you know people and ask them, if I found a phenomenal deal, would you partner with me? And they go, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you have unlimited supply because they might have a million bucks. And a million bucks for down payments and, and renovations and everything with the combination of private and hard money. I mean, you could do tens of millions of dollars of deals. Is Coco Capital National? Yeah. Yep. Nice. How do you spell this? K or C? C O G O. Mm -hmm. Nice. Great guy over there. Lee Arnold. Pooja. I love that Pooja. picture, by the way. Yeah. Where to get tax delinquent list? I called the counties, and they say everything is listed on the website for tax lien sale. I'm in Dayton, Ohio. Virtually. Uh, wholesaling virtually in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's best coming from the county. Um, what I would do, uh, Pooja, I would find somebody in Atlanta or in the groups and ask them where they get their, their tax delinquent list from. <clears throat> because it's, I mean, you can get tax delinquent in batch leads. Um, it's not going to be as up to date as the county, but it'll give you a good good idea of who's um who's delinquent on their taxes the issue and also going direct to the county they're going to give you every everything they're going to give you farmland they're going to give you you know storage <laughs> all facilities. the stuff you have to they're sift through yeah skyscrapers they're going to give you skyscrapers well maybe not skyscrapers in atlanta is there in atlanta? skyscrapers in atlanta well what's the definition of a skyscraper um, well, how, how tall does Brent that bowers was talking about this list he's like a lot of times the counties when you ask for tax delinquents they're just going to assume that you're looking for the tax sale properties. Right. Mm. So you got to tell them, no, 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 I want anything that's delinquent. Yes. Yeah. You know, and get, and they'll be like, oh, okay, gotcha, that one. 
So be more specific yeah. as far as. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see who won. Let's see which property was the most popular. Lake, was it Lake this House. property? Oh, beautiful. Or is it your own private island? Very nice. Look at that. Views. 180 degree views. Fantastic. And the winner is? Mm -hmm. Lake House. Oh, I want to know. I want to know why. What is? What is it? It was a landslide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I get. Listen, you know that that looks like. A, I, I don't think you lose on e either either one of them. I've seen the interiors of both of them, and they look fantastic. So, uh, that's good. <laughs> awesome. Lake House. Lake House. Mister Master Jar. Um, seller wants thirty k for a 16,990 square foot land, deal or no deal. Houses that are around the land going for uh, 250,000. Um, interesting, hmm. it just depends, is it, it would depend on if it's in a neighborhood or not, right? And so if it's in a neighborhood and the property is like literally like it's, it's, it's a developed area, it's just mm -hmm. a vacant lot there, that could be a deal. That could be a deal, and I, you could also do seller financing on that. And a lot of a lot of those land deals end up being seller financing um, because the the um, the builders don't want they want to hedge their risks, so they want to be like, okay, well, I can give you the thirty thousand, but I'm going to have to do it in installment payments until I build the house and sell it. But I would look at construction costs. Two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. I would look at the size of the homes. Are these homes that are a thousand square feet, or are these homes that are like two thousand square feet that go for two fifty? You know, you got to look at that, and then I would multiply uh, the price per square footage to build probably at about one hundred and fifty to one hundred sixty dollars a square foot, depending. So it might be a little bit tight because yeah. if it's a thousand square foot and it's one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty, you're at you know one hundred and sixty thousand plus you got ninety, you got one hundred ninety thousand. I would, I would try to get it for free. And that's, no. and yeah, and that's if it's in a developed area. You have a student. If it's rural. Yeah, if you, had, you have a student that's looking at a property in like Portland or something, and yep. the piece of land is like literally in a grove of trees. Yep. Now, there are houses around it that have been developed that in the comps are great, but what is it going to take to develop that piece of property where you can build a house on it? And that, well, I mean, if it has utility. If it has utility, like there's just, yeah, there's so many unknowns that you really have to figure out before you can really but do I a true comp. I wouldn't get scared of thinking no, about No, no, not I would at just, all. I would find out if they have uh, utilities. Mm -hmm. uh, if they have utilities, that's great. That 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 saves a lot of cost. Uh, is there anybody that has sold a lot and built a brand new home? I would go and see in that neighborhood, um, and it's and it's easy to do in Batch Leads to sh do the neighborhood search and look for properties that were built after 2021, yeah. and see if there's anybody there, and then backtrack to who the listing agent was on that on that uh, sale, and then reach out to them, them and see if they represent developers in the area. And then I would pre-sell it, honestly. I would go and I would find a buyer for it before I committed to that deal. I would go out and say, hey, listen, I can get you this lot at 40,000. Does this make sense? Yeah, I like that. Hey, Brent, do you have a seller finance contract you use? No. All the seller finance stuff that we put together, we have... We, just, uh, we write it in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we just put it in the purchase contract, and then what we do is we have it cleaned up by Constant Close, Rochelle at Constant Close. She does a phenomenal job. I think it's 500 bucks for them to take over the transaction from there, but they do everything, <laughs> like literally everything. And they make sure that everything's put together and everything's organized and everything's, if you're going to keep it, they make sure that there's, um, they know where the payments are going to go to. And, and if it's, once you get it rented, where it's coming from, all those things. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a really, really, really solid uh, company. And they Rochelle do, they do have creative financing. Do they, so are they national? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. They do have creative financing uh, contracts out there, but when we put something together, you can literally write all those terms and yeah. additional information on so the So if somebody the asked for Rochelle, would they, would, would, they, would they know how to find her? Yeah, Rochelle at Constant Close. Cool. Yeah. Juan. Juan, another on-market question. Would you pay the asking price plus assignment fee for a creative or market deal if the terms are good? I mean, if the terms are good, uh, then yeah, why not? I mean, it just kind of depends on... Location. Location, yeah, literally. 
Juan, listen, I mean, if it's in a right location, I'll buy it mm-hmm. because I'm thinking long term, right? If that, that's all I'm looking for. The issue is most of the deals that you see put out there are in terrible areas. So, so real quick. So earlier you said school district, good school district. Yeah, what are school. two or three other things that you might look at that, that, that would make it a good Where are location? the jobs? Where's the economy? Where's the, where, where is the industry in that area? Does it, it do, when you forecast it for the next 10, 20, 30 years, does it look like the city, the town, the state is putting infrastructure in mm-hmm. for big economic areas? Yep. Where do people want to move to? That's it. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where do people have, where are people able to get the jobs? Because the jobs, people want to live typically around where they work because they don't want to stay in, in uh, bumper to bumper traffic all day. So then when people want to be in a certain area, then that means uh, developers put money into that area. And then what happens is as prices increase in that area for oh, real man. estate, taxes increase, taxes cover the, the, the six S's. Right. Schools, security, streets, spaces, sanitation. And there's one more. I always forget the six ones. Six but, yeah, that's what that's what property taxes oh. cover. And that's why when properties increase in value, there's better school districts because more money gets poured into those areas. That's why Makes everybody's like, you know, Chicago's real cold and we pay a tremendous amount in property taxes, like a lot. But they have great schools. Yeah, they have phenomenal schools. Like that's, that's, you know, anyway, so you want to go in those areas that are going to appreciate more than the other areas. That's going to be insulated uh, against major uh, economic crashes. And you're going to go through three to five in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. There's going to be recession, three to five recessions in your lifetime on average. There is. And so if you go in and you have a long-term plan to build long-term wealth, don't buy in bad areas. So good schools for the kids to go to and good work for the parents to go to. Right. Right. That's it. Okay. Yep. And where people want to be. Um, oh, yeah. Mojo. Ba- yay area. This is you. Go ahead. Mojo. Uh, currently living in Northern California. Currently using PropStream as my current software. Is it better to look deals out of state? I mean, testing markets is is what we do, yep. you know, and you just kind of look at some markets and you start calling in those areas and kind of see where you can get traction. But uh, yeah, we're, we're all for virtual wholesaling and uh, testing those markets and kind of seeing what happens. It's it's <laughs> and not or. Right. So do them both. Yeah. Do in your market. You want vacant land. You want tired multifamily and you want driving for dollars for sure. The rest of it just that a tired apply- landlords. Just don't even worry about it. And that those applies to lists. every high-priced market. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Just In so those high-priced I love yeah. that ghost by you. I know. Really. That's, <laughs> that's way better than the one that you had before. Oh, um, yeah. Anyway, so and then add, add an additional market mm-hmm. for sure. <clears throat> and, guys, I want to invite you into the Wholesaling Inc. Facebook group. If you're not in that group, it is phenomenal. There's tremendous amount of support. It has been going. I mean, that, that group's been together for over – uh, seven years. It's phenomenal. So join that wholesaling Inc group, the wholesaling Inc, um, Facebook group, just type in wholesaling Inc, join it today. We'd love to have you in there and, uh, and respond to you guys. I'm in there all the time. There's so much good information in there. People are posting their questions and their concerns and all those things. And you have all these people who've been doing it for a while, answering them. Like it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Brent real quick. So, so for any high priced market like San Francisco, Mm -hmm. like earlier San Diego, And, and other places like that. So what are the two or three lists that you should be looking at? Uh, you want uh, driving for dollars. Yep. Vacant land, mm-hmm. entire multifamily. Awesome. Yep. Mm, San Francisco. Gah. You That's, love it? I, I, I mean, I, I love visiting. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't imagine like like just the real estate there. Oh, whatever. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Don Jesus Homes, uh, LA area has sellers willing to sell or finance around 3%. Okay. Problem is most are tenant occupied, try mm. or run away. We run with this a lot. Yeah. A lot of the students that we work with, um, in the Rhino tribe, um, in LA, uh, Don, they, they're going through this because the, the tenant landlord laws are 
huge in the favor yeah. of uh, the, the tenant. tenant. And listen, rightfully so. Listen, here's the thing. If you have a big market, and this is why this took me a long time. I was like, why are they so liberal in these big cities and in, in, in these big states and these people that, that, that it's because like you can't just have like just wealthy people living in the area and, and block out everybody else. Right. There's there has to be jobs that take care of the city. There has to be jobs that 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 provide food and services and all these other things. You have to have affordable living, and people can't pay for you know to drive and commute all the time. Uh, so there has to be areas in really popular um, like L.A. cities like L.A. that there has to be there has to be protections for these tenants, or mm -hmm. the city just goes to hell because nobody's taking care of it. Yeah. Right. Um, so that took me a long time to figure out, but, um, I would, I would have a conversation, see if you can have a conversation with the tenants, see if they're paying, see if they intend to pay, see if they have pride of their, the property that they're staying in. And if they do, then you, maybe you can work something out, but if they're locked into a certain price, the owner of the property has to understand that if it's an investment property and you've got this tenant in there locked into a certain amount of time and yeah. it's at a certain price, you got to take yeah. it, it affects the value. Got to take a cut. It affects the value. So you're going to want to find out the lease. You yep. know, is it month to month? Is it a year? Is it two years? Whatever it is, and figure out what they're paying in rent. Is it market value? Uh, is it way below market value? And then you look at the numbers that way. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't run. I, a few more questions are necessary to figure out what you want to do with that. Awesome, Michelle. Last question of the day. Great job, guys. Yeah. Great to have you on here. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. A kazoo. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a kazoo trombone. Oh, okay. Excuse Michelle, me. how do you purchase tax liens if under the amount of the home? You got to buy them at the tax lien foreclosure auction or the tax lien auction. Sorry, not foreclosure, but the tax lien auction. And those you can find from your county. It's typically, it's your county treasurer that's going to have uh, all the information on there. But if you just Google it, you'll find all the tax liens. And tax liens are an interesting strategy, it's a longer strategy. Um, because they start out at a certain uh, a percentage, about 16%, and then people bid them down. And some people bid them down to like earning 1% on their money because they're hoping if they buy enough of these things, uh, at some point people aren't paying their property taxes, they're able to foreclose and get those properties. But uh -huh. it's, a, it's a long process. And mm -hmm. it's a real, sometimes it's a real sticky process because people... Uh, don't want to lose their homes to sure. property taxes, but it happens sure. every day. Yeah. So that's it guys, guys, come on in, Matt, Daniel. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for joining us. I mean, it's an honor to be in front of you guys for 90 minutes every single week. We love it. We prepare for it. We're excited about it. We want to give you the most real, um, uh, up to date information and instruction. So on behalf of Matt, Daniel, Mike, Ryan, and myself, we love you guys. Remember, keep your house clean. Your literal house in this house, right? Mm -hmm. Protect your health, right? We don't worry about being sick until we're sick, and then that's the only thing we worry about. And then increase your value to the world, and you'll live a fantastic life. Love you. I'll see you next week. I love it.